And that breaking news at seven coming out of Sacramento. Police have made one arrest in connection with yesterday's mass shooting. We received this photo of DeAndre Martin. This is a previous booking photo from the Arizona Department of Corrections tonight. He is the only person in custody. He's 26 year old DeAndre Martin, and he was arrested in uh, connection to the K Street shooting. He was taken into custody on assault with a firearm and being a prohibited person in possession of a firearm. Tonight, we're also learning more about the six people who were shot and killed Sunday morning. Family members grieving as police look for more answers and who's responsible. Sacramento's chief of police releasing other information today on the shooting. Yeah, the chief says that three buildings and three cars were hit by that gunfire and officers found more than 100 shell casings at that scene. And all the names of the men and women have also been released. 21 year old John Taya Alexander, 57 year old Melinda Davis, 38 year old Sergio Harris, 32 year old Joshua Hoy Lacasey, 21 year old Yamile Martinez Andrade, and 29 year old Devonzier Turner. 12 other people were shot and they were taken to the hospital. We know at least four people were taken to the UC Davis Medical Center. Two of them have been discharged. Another five were taken to the Sutter Medical Center. All of them have been discharged. The conditions of the other people have not yet been released. And tonight people are gathering for a vigil to remember those who lost their lives. Casey Area 3's Brittany Hope standing by Life Force in downtown Sacramento with what we can expect from that event, Brittany. Hi, Golston. First, I want to make sure everyone knows exactly where we're located in case you're someone who's watching this and you do want to come. This is on the corner of K and 7th. We're just across the street from the Golden One Center and the large Doco sign. It's the square that during the winter time we're used to seeing some ice skating here and other winter activities. But during the rest of the year, it's really just a gathering place. Right now, you can see it is empty behind me. That's because we're here a little bit early um, previewing the event for everyone because we know our whole community has been impacted on this and we want you to have the information. So starting at 730, that's when the vigil is going to begin. And it's really about community healing. It's being hosted by the city and also community leaders really coming together for this. So it begins at 730 and remarks are supposed to then take over at 8 o'clock. And we expect folks to kind of stay out here throughout the evening. The big emphasis is community and they really want everyone to know if you have been touched by this, you just want to show your support. This is open to everyone in Sacramento. We're live in downtown Brittany Hope, KCRA 3. News. All right, Brittany, thanks. And the people killed range in age from 21 to 57 years old. We haven't had a chance to speak to some of the families of the six killed. We will start with 29 year old Devazier Turner. His mom says that he leaves behind a wife and four young kids. They range from three to 10 years old. He himself was the only boy with three sisters born and raised in Sacramento. I want people to know that he is a great person and that he loved his family and you took away somebody that meant a whole lot to a whole lot of community people. I mean, with our Facebooks, everything is flooded with love. People have been to my house with love and support and I mean, I just can't, I can't, I just can't grasp it. I just can't grasp it. I'm losing my voice. I've cried since 2.30 in the morning on Sunday. And another victim was 32 year old Joshua Hoy Lucchesi. Case Harry 3's Maricela Cruz spoke to his mother. 32 year old Joshua Hoy Lucchesi among the six killed in downtown Sacramento this weekend. I've been strong through the process. You know, that's all I can do. I mean, I don't know what to do, but <clears throat> I have a lot of good people around me. One day after his passing, his mother, Sherilyn Hoy, is grieving the loss of her only son as she looks through old photos. I never wanted kids. And I said if I was to have a kid, I just wanted a boy. And I was blessed with a boy. Hoy says she was first notified by her son's yeah. girlfriend minutes after the shooting. I got a phone call at 2.45 that my son had been shot and killed. She later saw photos I and had, videos of Joshua on social media. Here. It was a post of my son on the ground, dead. It was sent to me through Instagram. My son was laying on the ground, dead. 
McCoy went to the Sacramento City Hall, which was established as an information center for families of victims of the shooting, to confirm her son's death. Maricela de la Cruz, KCRA 3 News. And we have more. KCRA 3's Aaron Heft met with the father of 21-year-old victim, John Taya Alexander, whose family says that they're still reeling with disbelief in the loss of their daughter. Described as loving and kind, John Taya Alexander was here down K Street to pick up her sister from the club when shots were fired. The gunshots just rang out just like it was a war zone. 21-year-old John Taya Alexander was picking up her older sister from a club. Her dad, John, says John Taya was always looking out for family. And that's the unfortunate thing. I gather she was either getting out to check on her sister or get her a hot dog. She wasn't able to run too far before she just went down. And her sister thought it was her, her knee because she had a pre-existing knee injury. And she thought it was her knee. And she asked her, is it your knee? And she was like, no. And they you know, she said she just started gargling up blood and took her last breath. The Alexander family says they're barely making it day by day. My baby was just starting life because all this just happened, you know, shockingly. You know, I would never thought I would have to get a life insurance on my 21 year old. John Taya was the family's youngest child. She had just moved out on her own. She had an apartment. She had a dream of giving back and becoming a social worker. Outgoing, headstrong, spoke her peace, whether you liked it or you didn't. She was just an all around girl living her 21 year old life. Her life taken in the matter of moments. Be more responsible for your children, whether you feel they're adults and they have to make their own decision. As us, as parents, we still have to be there for our kids, our children, and speak to them and talk to them and get their insight and give them your insight on what life is all about. And it's not just living for the moment, it's days after this. The Alexanders have put together a GoFundMe. They now work to plan the service of their youngest child, the baby of the family, to put her to rest. In Sacramento, Aaron Heft, KCRA 3 News. Now, the family of one of the young women killed, Yamile Martinez Andrade, described what they're going through. Shock, uh, still in shock, uh, you know, trying to get to the bottom of things and without no... Uh, you know, nobody knocking on our door and letting us know what really happened. Stuff's kind of frustrating. You know, we're still waiting for answers and stuff, so. And we're learning more now about the man police took into custody earlier today. KCR3 investigates Brittany Johnson has been looking into the first suspect arrested so far and joins us live with the latest. Brittany? Well, DeAndre Martin was booked into the Sacramento County Jail on charges of assault and illegal firearm possession. But tonight we're learning he's been wanted in Riverside County since 2015. Jail records show Martin has an outstanding warrant for a misdemeanor domestic violence charge. According to court documents, Martin inflicted bodily injury, resulting in a traumatic condition to his spouse. Martin pled guilty to that charge in 2014. He was sentenced to 30 days custody and 36 months probation. According to the Riverside County DA, Martin later violated two terms of probation, the community service requirement and a 52 week class requirement. A $5,000 bench warrant was issued by the court in 2015. We've also learned Martin spent time in an Arizona prison. He was released in 2020 after serving just over a year and a half for violating probation in separate felony convictions for attempt to commit aggravated assault in 2016 and a conviction on a marijuana charge in 2018. We did speak with SAC PD today and want to reiterate, we do not know how DeAndre Martin was involved with the shooting. He's being held right now without bail and is scheduled to be in court tomorrow. Also, after police arrested Martin today, SWAT and detectives served search warrants at three residences. They recovered at least one handgun. Reporting live tonight in the newsroom, Brittany Johnson, KCRA 3 News. All right, Brittany, thanks. Earlier today, Sacramento Mayor Daryl Steinberg came to our studio to speak with Andrea Flores about the shooting. She asked the mayor about allowing events to continue as police were investigating that mass shooting. We've heard yesterday during one of the press conferences, you encouraged people to continue on, to not let this get in the way of everyday life, to continue to come to downtown. Yes. Um, this was less than 24 hours. The bodies of the victims were still at the scene. Do you think 
that that was a little bit too soon to send that message? Well, I was asked the question, um, and, and so I responded. And I was referring um, to, the, to the days and the weeks and the months ahead. And I think it is very important, um, obviously, that we put the victims first. But we also recognize that there are a lot of hardworking men and women who have opened uh, businesses, small businesses downtown. There are a lot of people who work downtown. And I think it is important for the mayor um, to speak to the wide uh, audiences here and to all of the issues that um, we are feeling uh, in the moment. And so no, I don't think it was too soon because it wasn't isolated. I, I, I answered the question, do I think people should go downtown? And my answer is yes. Mm -hmm. um, there are two responses to tragedy, which by the way, can occur anywhere, could have occurred anywhere. And it occurred at two o'clock in the morning. Um, we can cower, and we can, uh, and we can say that we are going to isolate ourselves from one another, or we can recognize that this downtown is a growing um, and, and beautiful place with a lot of challenges. I mean, look at this weekend or this week. We had three major concerts. You had Wicked. You've got restaurants that have long waiting uh, lists uh, and reservations for, for people to get in. People, people need, especially during this period of time, mm -hmm. people need to be among each other. People need to be out. I mean, we've had enough with COVID and people being isolated. So it is not in any way uh, inconsistent with our first responsibility, and that is to care for the people who are suffering, the victims, and to continue to elevate the precautions that we're already taking, additional security, additional lighting, additional security cameras to assure and reassure people that downtown is safe and to say, live your lives because we need to be with each other. California Senator Dianne Feinstein released a statement about the shootings. It reads in part, enough is enough. We can no longer ignore gun violence in our communities. Congress knows what steps must be taken to stop these mass shootings. We just have to act. Well, there's now an assistance center set up at Cal Expo to support families this week affected by the shooting. They'll be open from 830 till 5 every day until Friday. Hours could change. We'll keep an eye on that. You're asked to use the lot D entrance. The center will be staffed by victim witness advocates and the American Red Cross emotional support team.